Welcome everyone. We're going to begin the webinar on seam sealers, making the right choice for the repair by St. Cobain, also known as Refinish Solutions Group. I'm Melissa Joles with RDA Impact. Dennis Beardsley, North American Training Manager for St. Cobain is your presenter today. The presentation will take approximately 35 to 40 minutes. We are recording it and we'll post it on our YouTube channel. If you have questions during the webinar, you can type them in the chat box at the bottom right of your screen and they will be answered during the presentation. Now, I'll turn it over to Dennis. Thank you, Melissa, and thank you everyone else for listening to our presentation today. Uh, so we wanna talk about seam sealer and making the right decision and choice. I always wanna bring this up, the three rules. Rule one, follow the OEM guidelines. Rule two, follow the OEM guidelines. And rule three, I love this one, re refer to rule one and two. Where you want to find that information, if you don't know, uh, OEM One Stop is a good resource. Some of the um, estimating software, all data, and ICAR RTS. So if you need to find that information, go ahead and search that out. Our, our training today is designed around uh, one of our alliance one of our four alliance training classes that we do out in the field. What we do is we do training right in the shops. Um, we call them either lunch and learns or we do it right after the, the work day. And we are an approved ICAR industry training alliance provider. We, these are the four classes that we have. There's our two bumper repair, there's our three composite repair and bonding. Today we'll be talking about 006 sealing and sound control, and the 008 is structural mechanical and bonding. Okay, this is the, the one we're going to be talking about today. We won't be doing the hands-on or the testing version, but you'll get a good feeling of what what our in-shop classes are about. Dennis, I have I have a question here already. Oh, um, they want okay. to know how how would I know if I need a Fuser Alliance class? to get ICAR Platinum certified? Oh, it's a good question. Uh, well, so thank you for sharing that. Um, I actually had, I had a class here yesterday. I had a few distributors asking the same question. Um, where, how do, where am I? If, if you contact ICAR and you find out where your shop is with, with your training, they'll help you along to know if you can uh, which which fuser class to take, and we'd be more than happy to do this training inside in your shop. Just contact your your local distributor, and they'll contact your no, local uh, Norton or Carborundum representative. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Here's what we're going to talk about today: um, understanding chemistry of the sound of sealer and sound dampening products to duplicate OEM feel and look. Learn proper and safe use of fuser products. Proper dispensing techniques, very important. Understand sealer and foam applications. The advantages of bare metal sealing. Sound control applications. And again, we're not gonna do the, the hands-on activity or the, the test, um, but we do do that in the shop when we do the Alliance training. So when I when I present this material when we're here in our training center in Albany, hey, New York. Dennis, I'm sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but um, I'm, I guess um, the answer was unclear um, on the ICAR question. How many ICAR sure. points are okay? So it says how many ICAR points are the fuser classes worth? Good question. So these these the 002 and 003 are one hour of contact time. So we, they call it credit hours now. The sealing and sound control and the structural and mechanical bonding are two hours contact time. Thank you for that. Does that answer that question? I think so, thanks. Thank you. So when we start talking about team sealer, this is our, our fuser beadboard and when you look at it, it's there's a there's a lot of options here. <laughs> no kidding. So the first question you really have to ask yourself is, what am I doing? Is 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 color important? 
is, is, does it need to fall out? Does it need to have an OEM approval? You'll see right here on the right-hand side. All right, is that important to me? You'll see right here, this little branding, and it's a little fuzzy there, but what that says is bare metal, okay? For bare metal, is that important to me? Don't know. You have to ask those questions of, of what, what you want to do with it, all right? Let me continue on. There's four different types of uh, adhesives and sealer chemistries. Acrylic, urethane, epoxy, and silane terminated polymer, or we call it short for STP. That line, the next line, one chemistry cannot do everything. Depends what you want. We're talking about urethanes right here. And, and, and we're talking about uh, one, uh, 123. It's a flexible product. It bonds and seals the plastic. And you'll see they're primed metals. When we get into primed metals, we're talking specifically primer that's not an acid etch. Not an acid etch. And anything with acid in it will, will uh, go after the seam sealer and, and potentially delaminate the seam sealer if there's an acid etch underneath there. So you definitely don't want to have that. When you see a 2K primer, we're generally talking about urethane or epoxy type of technology in the coatings. Um, urethanes are moisture sensitive. And again, they need primer. Epoxies. They eat, they're easy to use, they sand easy, they, blot, they bond and seal plastics and prime metal. It can be a little rigid, that may be good or bad, don't know. Uh, you can heat cure it. So you, what you can do on most epoxies, you can accelerate the curing so you can, you can get that car out quicker with heat. And again, uh, underneath it, use a two component primer unless it says bare metal, bare metal sealer. Acrylics. Acrylics, they're great anti-corrosion properties. They bond and seal bare metal. Um, very, actually the fastest room temperature cure. So if you don't have um, an infrared lamp or a booth, you know, that, that, that fastest room temperature cure is gonna, gonna be your acrylic. The only thing is it smells, I'm not being funny here, it smells like a nail salon, very acrylic odor to it. Um, and the, the technology, the way it works, is it cures without oxygen. So that top surface stays tacky. So you wipe that away and abrade it for the next coating that you're going to put on top of it. The STP products, all right? Bonds and seals with unprimed metal. And again, you can see on the right-hand side, bare metal sealer. This is, this is, a, this is new. It, it's a weld-through, squeeze-type resistant spot welding seam sealer. So you normally see this on the rear of a body panel. Um, you would put the seam sealer down, put the body panel together, resistant spot weld through it, and, and that is how the manufacturer wants you to repair it. There are no solvents in STP technology, no isocyanates, virtually odor-free. Uh, it cures with humidity. So if you are in a very dry climate, um, it will tend to dry a little slower. Um, but now we're in the, uh, the, the summer season, we're not gonna be thinking about that. We're gonna have a lot of humidity, I'm sure of it. Uh, no hazardous air pollutants or HAPs, low VOCs or solvents. And this is, this is key. Once you spray this material out, you can paint it right away. So very, very, very efficient. A couple safe, uh, safety uh, points to bring up. Always practice safe habits. You know, keep it off your skin, gloves. Uh, wear uh, eye protective, uh, eye protection, excuse me. If you get it in your eyes, flush immediately. And contact a physician. All right. Bullet two, common sense. That's really the, the big thing, right? Um, treat all adhesives and chemicals with respect. 
Next one, this is our storage cabinet. This is where you would store the materials, um, being it before they're used if they're, or, or after um, it's been used a few times and the tip's still on it. This cabinet can, can, is a good storage option. We want to keep, speaking of storage, we want to keep the temperature between 60 and 80 degrees if you can. Um, that those cold temperatures, um, you can double dry times um, if you're below. If you're at, at uh, 50, excuse me, 50 degrees, you know, you're talking doubling your dry times with a lot of these products. Uh, when you get hotter, you know, you're cutting those dry times in half, depending on the material. Humidity. Urethanes react with, with water moisture. They actually would much rather react with humidity than they would the actual product. So you want to make sure you keep away any humidity from that material. You know, the, the urethanes that gives it away, um, they're in any of our foil packing uh, will be a urethane, and there'll be a little desiccant pouch in there trying to keep the moisture out of there. So. <clears throat> Use of partial cartridges. So what that means, if you've gun material out, you want to leave the tip on there, okay, to seal it off, except for foam. Foams, be it the rigid or flexible foam, you want to, after you're done dispensing the material, you want to immediately take that tip off, plug the, the two uh, A and B sides, or if you do not, the foam will expand back into the cartridge, back out the plungers, and make one heck of a mess in that gun in, in the shop. I promise you. I may have done that. I love this slide. So right here is best used within. This will tell you right here when this material was made. This was made February 14, 2017, and right underneath it, because different products are, have different shelf lives, it'll tell you best used within 18 months. Okay, um, we're getting we're getting towards the end of this product, um, but uh, we're, we're we're still good here. So um, take a look at that packaging. Make sure you're using fresh product always. Here's some of our dispensing options. We have four manual dispensing. Uh, this is for single cartridges or our 2098 dual cartridge. It's got a special uh, piston in there that makes it easy to come out. Uh, this is for our dual cartridges, this one. This is for our smaller cartridges right here, or 1.5 millimeter of milliliter, excuse me. And here's our pneumatic option right here. We've got a quick video here. About purge and run out. It is important to note that prior to using any two component adhesive, seam sealer, or foam, dispense a small amount of material from the cartridge to ensure an even flow of both components. Then attach a mixing tip and dispense a small amount of material until uniformly mixed. You want to make sure that we're purging each time we put a new tip on that. So if you did it the first time when the package is brand new, you want to continue on until that cartridge is used up each time. You want to make sure you purge that material out. Or time and temperatures. Again, your work time is based at 70 degrees. Everything we do is at 70 degrees. So for every 20 degree increase, in temperature, the work the work time is cut in half. Okay. Same with the other way. When you go 20 degrees cooler, it will it will double it. So we want to make sure we want to keep those temperatures as close to 70 as possible. Again, work time is based at 70 degrees. Manufacturing and date shelf life we shared with that. You may ask, why are certain words underlined, like right here? Because when we go through our alliance training class, these 
this would be blank on the uh, student's objective worksheet and the student would fill this in. So that's why that is, that is like that. Um, the goal is to match the OEM seam sealer, okay? Either we spray it, we brush it, we beat it on, in some cases self-leveling, control flow or full body seam sealer. Again, what do we need it to do? What work time or skin time is desired? 2K products are, are faster than 1K. Um, is it bare or primed metal? Most sealers require primer, but we have uh, quite a few, uh, six of them out of the nine that, that don't require primer. Substrate can, you know, with our 019 and our HD and BPM sealers, uh, we do not need to use primer. That can be a huge, a huge advantage for, for cycle time in the shop. So here's, here's a really good cheat sheet of no primer required on the left side. So we're talking the 019 bare metal brushable seam sealer. You see medium there, that's its build. We have the HD uh, sprayables. Okay. You can put that in a caulk tube or spray it. Uh, the DTM are caulk tube only, so the 800 and 803. 129, control flow. You see control flows a lot in, in with door skins. A control flow, when you when you gun it out, will will, will level slightly um, to have a nice smooth finish where you don't have to tool it as much uh, with an acid brush with with a slower solvent or so on. You don't have to do that. It, it'll do it itself. Um, the 123, 126, you know, those in your fast worlds. The 123SL, what it is, it's, an, it's, a, it's 123, but a slower version. You run into that in, in warmer climates or when it gets warmer in the summertime if you're uh, in the north. Products that need primer, flexible foams. We see mostly flexible foams, for the most part, uh, on door skins and roof bows. Rigid. Actually, we've seen a lot more rigid foam in the last few years with manufacturers. Normally, it stayed to in pillars. Uh, we've seen it in rear body panels. Uh, the entire cavity of the uh, rear body panel filled with rigid foam. Your 123 EZ and your 126. Your the last one is a 122 self-leveling seam sealer. Um, that is normally where you'd see, you would be using that um, in a roof ditch, kind of example in a second here. Four roof ditches include 97 F-150s to present and explorers. Um, always you would use a two component product. Here's an example of the 122 in the, this is an example of a 2011 F-150, but it's too present. Uh, that's, that's what you put in there. It guns out a, a blue, and then when it dries down, it dries down to, a, to a, like a green, a transparent green. Go ahead and coat it uh, with your appropriate primer and paint and, and paint it. Control flow. Again, door skins, you know, truck, truck bed seams, no tooling necessary. I like this. Uh, used for plant repairs and, and general motors. To the right there, you'll see an example. This is a tech tip from uh, Chrysler. There, this is an example of a door for a Jeep, and it's suggesting you use 019, um, excuse me, uh, 129, to apply in the door skin because when it's sold from the factory, it does not have seam sealer on it. So you have to apply that um, before the car is painted. Here's our examples of uh, DTMs, okay? Um, here's an interior, or excuse me, a door skin. And here's a rear body panel. Critical, critical for seam sealer to be in these because we don't want them to rust out. 
Some cars are brushed on. Um, again, when we do the uh, in-shop alliance training, we would uh, show different techniques. There's some really cool techniques that uh, not only we learn, we learn out in the field from, from you folks. You know, we use anything from acid brushes to uh, red scuff pads to make this texture to um, uh, you name it. Uh, use uh, p uh, pinking shears with a body filler spreader to make, uh, uh, make that uh, combed look. Some pretty, pretty cool stuff going on out there. This is with our uh, HD um, example is sprayed right here. Uh, make sure if there's any exposed metal that it's right here, that it has the appropriate primer right on top of it. Because this is very uh, good corrosion protection. But if we don't have anything here, that, that is exposed. I got a quick video here that I'm, I'm going to kill the sound. I'm going to um, talk over this. So here's an example of our sprayable seam sealer being applied. And here's an example right here of making a sound deadening pad. Reduces repair cycle times, direct to metal, increased profits, single component, and it matches that OEM quality and appearance. Critical to what you do every day. You can do it quick. We have it in black, beige, gray, and neutral. Again, make sure that you use um, glasses, gloves, common sense, right? You want to make sure, I'm going to stop that right there. You want to make sure, you know, what am I, what am I trying to repair? What, what do I need to do? Do I need to make a ribbon? Do I need it to look like this? Do I need to use pinking shears to do this example? a lot of these. Do I need this? Does it need to be brushed on? What kind of brush look? Right. We want to make sure we want to spray it a wider pattern like in the wheelhouse. We want to make a pad, combed or not, on the underbody coating. Right here, I have met the SAA, you know, our, our uh, high definition sealers uh, have met the SAE J400 chip resistance, are approved and replaced underbody coatings for Chrysler vehicles. Right. Weld through. I talked about it a little bit before rear body panels, tail lamp pockets, and inner and outer wheelhouses are being, uh, instead of well, uh, instead of uh, metal adhesives being used, they're actually using a seam sealer, mating the panels, and, and a resistant spot welder is used um, to, to bond it. And then the hot spot um, is, is non-existent because it's surrounded by a, a good quality seam sealer um, with that resistant spot weld. Uh, Dennis, we have a question. Oh, sure. Um, it says, how do you know the difference between a seam sealer product and a metal bonding product on a rear body panel? Oh, that's a good question. Good question. Um, and thank you for that. What you do, if it's, if it's specified at the OEM, obviously that's, that's going to help. But if it's not, believe it or not, you're going to you're going to take your finger, and if it's pliable, like a seam sealer, that's what's on that car. If it's if it's rigid, then it's a metal adhesive on it. Um, but that's that's going to identify if it's if it's rubbery, like a seam sealer. That's that's what it is, and that's what you have to replace it with. That's a good question. Thank you for that. Here's 
here's an example of well through ceiling. So we have an example of the spot welder. We have a rear body panel here. We're putting the HD on. You can gun it out or spray it out. Recommended by General Motors and Chrysler. Make sure you test the panel with the appropriate grip that the manufacturer wants you to use. Again, this is going to reduce repair cycle time, goes direct to metal, increase profits, it's weld through, and that's exactly what the OEM quality and appearance is. Okay. That's something when, when we do, when I do, I talk about this a lot in training and uh, what I do every day, and it's really an eye opener. I'll, I'll, uh, the use of seam sealers instead of metal adhesives is uh, um, something that uh, isn't as common. So just be on the lookout for that. Sealing and foam applications. All right. Again. We want to make sure, you know, of our bare metal sealing. Um, we want to make sure that it's good corrosion protection. We want to go, um, you know, it's quality, speed, and cost is what we're looking for, right? So we want to make sure um, that we have all those with the product that we're using. This is some, uh, this is a cool slide. So this is comparative salt spray test. On the left side are fusion products, right? So after four weeks in the spray spray test, which recommend which represents four years on the road. So if you take a look at that, right here is where the seam sealer was applied and then it was put in the salt spray cabinet. And this is a leading competitive material. So it's interesting about four years what it looks like. All right? Right through here versus right here. Okay. This one is an eight week salt spray cycle test, right? Which represents eight years on the road. And you can see that 019, that acrylic, you know, both the four week and the eight week, how well it does. Right. Sound dampening. We can make sound dampening pads. Um, be it combed, be it sprayed on, wheelhouses, okay, inner wheelhouses, or uh, spare tire covers, excuse me, uh, floor pans. Okay. The HD products pass the ASTM D1735 and are approved by Chrysler to replace all OEM PVC underbody coatings. Okay. Foams. So they provide a stiffening and filling and sound dampening. Make the car quieter, right? Um, you can find it in all sorts of places. Fenders, rails, pillars, uh, rocker panels, quarter panels, floors, inside fender sometimes. Very, very fast cure. Definitely requires primer. It expands at a 10 to 1 expansion rate, which means as you gun it out, that's going to expand out 10 times out. All right. Um, as you can see, the OEM recommended by Ford and Chrysler. Um, now I want to share something here. This is a typical OEM rigid acoustical foam application. So let's say you had a section of foam right here that you're replacing, but this is an empty cavity all the way through. So if I was in your shoes, I'd go, how, how would I get this? How do I do this? Believe it or not, you get a balloon. And you blow up a balloon right in here, apply the material, and then pop the balloon, and, and you'll be able to keep that foam right there without it dripping down. Flexible foam. We use it on intrusion beams. Roof bows, door skins, right? Um, hood panels in some cases, uh, trunk panels. 
sometimes gas tank fillers. Um, with all of the foams, they are a closed cell technology, okay? The, uh, we get asked this a lot. The, the uh, commercial home foams are an open cell, so they're, they're, they're like a sponge, where these automotive applications are closed cells. They're not gonna suck in water, and that's really critical um, to making sure that matches OEM uh, pre-accident uh, condition. They require primer, right? And uh, this, the flexible foam is recommended by GM and Ford. This is where, we're not gonna do this today, but this is where we would do the, the test. Um, and then we would actually go out and gun out the material right, right in the shop, show the different techniques of the different ribbons in, in beads and um, dampening pads. And it's, 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 it's really a fun, uh, fun piece to do. So uh, I highly recommend um, if, you, if you're interested in this training, um, you can get a hold of Melissa and she can contact me or your local Norton or Carborundum uh, rep representative. I wanna say thank you your time today. Um, I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, this was uh, a lot of fun. I appreciate your time. Um, we don't have any questions, Dennis, um, but I am getting thank yous. <laughs> and oh, okay. uh, I, I will follow up by sending everyone who attended um, Dennis's contact information. So if you do have questions, you can follow up. And if you want to find out how to get that ICAR Certifications, you can um, you can ask many questions, and um, I still don't see any questions. So I think that's going to conclude our webinar, and we'll be in touch with um, upcoming training opportunities. Thank you, Dennis. We appreciate um, your time and everybody who attended. Thank you. Thank and you. yes, oh, I sh I'll follow up by saying we did record it. It will be available by a link. Somebody was asking me that, so uh, it will be on our YouTube channel, so you will be able to to go back and uh, and review this uh, presentation again. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.